Um, hello and welcome to a new game. Let's say enjoy playing a 2Q+. So I will have 0, 05 Komi. Have to count in that. And playing against the Senrensei. Long time uh, since I've played that. So let's see. Um, I want to approach the Senrensei. Uh, do I do it from the bottom or from the top? On the top I have a low stone, so expanding from it. Mm, it's still semi Kobayashi. And maybe then I co I can go for the No, let's approach from the bottom. And let's approach from the top. If my opponent is so kind and responds, he is concentrated only on one side, and I can start building up a double wing very fast. Um, and now I have to ask myself, do I answer his last move? If I do, I'll probably get pincered, and now I have a weak group, he will make those points. I say no to that. So I will. Let's say he plays another move here, then he have massive, he will have massive influence on the bottom, so I will negate this influence. And as you can see, he is concentrated on only one side, and I have spent almost the rest of the board. Um, and here, he gives me a weak group to attack while building points. And now those decisions which are hard, do I just take my third line territory and a large corner? He will still have weak groups. Let's just do that. Although the, uh, this C16 compared to E, he wants to fight anyway. Um, So I can now give him the corner while the one stone still is not captured. I kind of want to play E17 to break up the connection between the stones. And then be uh, nice and well in the corner. He can honey. I will take the stones. He still has a weak group. Well, now he has some influence. So I will poke at his influence, or rather the cuts, and see whether I can, well, attaching is too aggressive, huh? Now that he has the influence, I maybe have to pull back, but since he has no two eyes, he's no, not prepared to fight in this area, 
so I still can uh, try to does this book all this high Now I have poked out his eye in Senti making good shape and uh, I like this result for white. So um, again, do I save the one stone? If I do, how do I do it? By extending down if he follows. That's good for me. If he does something else, I can connect and then my stone save. So let's play it this way and continue to surround his influence um poke to remove eyes Connect to make my shape nice and strong. He will jump out. I will continue building. Poke to build and ask kindly for fourth line territory. Since I'm undercut on both sides, I just go for the eye and not for this one, which is still not an eye for black. I have to be careful not to attack too much. And try to build this quarter of the board. Yeah, this was the funny move. Um, if I just lean and let him take two stones, uh, then he will be he will be off the hook. Um, if I play this way, he will extend out. If I cut, then. I like this surrounding idea a little bit more. And maybe that was a bad move. I wanted to create some influence here. Um, let's think again. What does black have? Black has this corner and this corner. Uh, here is an invasion. I could do that. Now here is a possible large move to build the bottom. I will get pincers, extend up, he will jump, I'll get to the center. Let's first threaten to revive O. I think I'm done attacking on the top right.
He likes uh, the crosscut, it seems. Um. So my weakest stone is in the corner. So I will protect that. Here is an interesting call. If he wins there, then he has a nice follow-up, so no call for you, Black. And here things could go wrong. Um, if I play incorrectly, then my 1, 2, 3 stones are going to die. So, I could ask the question, are those three stones, can they escape if I just lean on them? I mean, if I peep, he will most certainly just play lightly and escape. I do not want him to escape, so I will... I will play nice and strong, building up some uh, influence towards the center, not letting him escape. He's probably... Uh, he is not going to cut. So I can first change this one. Well, let's see, if I just protect my cut, he'll play this one. And then... I'll protect the cut, he plays h1, I drop down, he protects, I'll play here, he plays e... 1. I'll extend up. He jumps out in search for eyes. So the last question becomes, can he get one more eye with e4? And I hope the answer is no after I'll fix my own cut. So he will need to jump out, and I should be able to push him into my thickness, and that will be it. And this one is the snapback. Um, uh, 
Ah, and this one was the snapback. 2Q plus. Problems with snapbacks. And that was the game. He uh, did nothing with his Sandrancy during the whole game at all. He created a weak group here, a weak group here, and just died at one place. Let's uh, review. Maybe I'll play the second one. This was pretty short. So I go against the Sandrancy. I could play this way. And if he backs off, I'll start my own framework, which is rather dubious because I'm playing the Sandrense. The Sandrense is maybe the largest framework opening that we know. And uh, I'll have to go for my Chinese variation and he maybe will approach. And continue to expand the Sandrense. Now my framework does not look that big in comparison to, um, again, the Sandrense. So I skipped that idea and approached from the bottom. So if he backs off, I can limit his framework on the other side as well. If he pincers, then we get the usual Sandrense uh, corner reductions and then I can approach from the top as well. Um, he backed off twice and then he continued on my um, um, wait a second uh, on my him ignoring him but uh, Tinuki of course so if I'll continue the stone then I'm pincered and he's put in territory so I have he has a lot, corner plus side, and I have a weak group. So continuing this stone is not that of a good idea, I think. Can treat that as corner RG for later. So I'll start expanding my own framework fast. So now I have a double wing and he has only one side. I guess he can start a large-scale attack on the one stone. I still will consider giving that stone up and treat that as corner RG for later. So we have something like this. And from here now my framework seems larger than his, so I will continue building that. Um, <coughs> He plays uh, near his thickness, removing Aji. That's a nice idea. So if I now extend again, I will be pincered. And again, I will have a weak group. And again, he's building territory. <clears throat> I did not like that very much, so... I thought if I'll play elsewhere and he completely removes the archie so he will have thickness and thickness I will need to reduce so I can reduce it immediately and then um, moves like this one are harder to pincer because now he has no base himself So I'll play the corner move, enlarging my framework. And he invades. Since he realizes my framework starts growing too fast. I could go ahead and take my corner, which is a valid idea. Then he will probably settle on the side. And um, maybe even in Sente. And can continue 
after his invasion, but after this invasion anything around Q12 for white will be easy. So that is okay, however I did not want him to have it that easy, so I'll remove this base, he attached and cross cut, and as we know if somebody cross cuts then he just looks for Aji and does not read all out those variations. So I'll extend and maybe this was a bad decision. Just settling for the corner and giving him outside influence. Although he is still not settled, I'm kinda confined in the corner. So maybe something else. But if something else, then... Um, Again, here I'm pushed down on, on the second line, don't like that. So maybe my extension here to break up his influence was no good. Maybe I should... Well, my other idea was to play this way. And uh, this way I almost kill off the one stone. It still has some archie, but that's okay. Now I need to come back and protect, and he had a nice invasion to my corner. So I did not want that, so maybe my J17 was not that strong. Or maybe here I should have hung it on the other side to split up his connection. If he cross cuts now... What happens then? Well, a fight uh, happens. <laughs> or he just goes into the corner and again slip, again it's there. Um, Still, I'm okay with uh, with uh, what I did, since he... Uh, not, I didn't do that, sorry. I did it this way. No, not that either. I just went for some points in the corner, and he is still not completely settled. So I'll go for his round. And this one... I disagree with uh, what he did. He played it this way, I got a very strong shape and his eye is uh, vanished and all he has got is this one, G15. Um, but what to do here? Attach. If I can't, then I'm dead. So after attaching, I will need to extend, and then you can play your original idea, and now you have one move more. Maybe. So here um, I realize his, um, if he gets one more I, like uh, with F13, now my C11 is become, uh, will be too close to thickness and will get under attack. So I'll protect it and if he disconnects me now, I'll have one move more here and he did not achieve much. So I'll again continue my attack. 
So obviously he does something else, but he tinukis. He tinukis to get one more uh, move on the side, which I did not play at all. Allow, uh, allow me, allowing me to surround him. If he just goes to settle. I mean, this will be senti, he will be settled, and... He is nice and fine, and maybe he now can... look after my... left? I guess? He jumped out, I protect my stone, I connected up my weakness, And while surrounding him, I'll build fourth line territory. So here, if I just connect, he will get two eyes. I'm still undercut, so I need to play this move to get territory, and this is too slow. So I'll continue to remove his eyes, not caring about the undercut territory, which is no real territory. This move I disagree with. Um, in Gote, he maybe he removes. I mean, he does not completely remove the connection here, since uh, there is still this move. So he neither disconnects me. He just removes a few points, but the points are irrelevant. My points are on the bottom left. So I'll build the points on the bottom left while surrounding him. And yeah, here's uh, here's the RG. Maybe I should have gone ahead and fixed that RG. Or even stronger than this. Oh, wait. Even this way. Well, still I will play this way since... Uh, I want to surround this group, and this one is still weak. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll build while surrounding, and he goes for Archie. So um, if I cut, it's getting super dangerous since I have a weak group here. And if he lives, then I well, that's a, a big if. But if his group is alive, then I have given him too much influence for nothing. So way too risky uh, and too much of a commitment to kill. Uh, maybe I should play this way. If he extends out, I have. His group is weaker, I have faster moves, if he connects, then I connect, and we continue from here, but again, um, this is not a connection for the three stones, he will get out, I will need to fix, he will get out. I'm fine with this result because I have still my uh, my sente, but the invasion around Q8 became much harder with more influence for black. So I just went for um, more center influence. He fixes, and I realize that now if I chase him, he'll just surround my group, and my group becomes weaker with every of his moves, and he builds influence, so I need to go this way. <coughs> Maybe this was a stronger move than mine. But still, my, my uh, three stones here are not 
very strong so all I did here those are too close to thickness and his age 40 move is right on the spot so I'll play one more move and say that's okay this RG I cannot handle so I'll continue elsewhere uh, threatening to revive my one stone <coughs> and building again if he kills it I can go for a quarter of the board negating his influence so he invades again with the crosscuts he obviously lies, uh, likes those uh, crosscuts if I'll play it this way he will most Probably honey and um, coal. If I connect now, then he will just push me around everywhere and comfortably get out. I did not like this too much, so I thought, well, I can kill this stone. And um, you have still a little bit of a weak group, and you need to run. And while you're running, I will get uh, center influence. This was my original plan. He connected this way, allowing me to extend up. So I'm getting this center influence anyway. And even if he lives on the second line, that's okay. I got the corner, I got the center influence, I can invade at Q8. So I'll just play the strong center influence move. And here I expected him to um, cut since there is still RG so it will look like this maybe but again his bottom group is not that strong so I was thinking it will be fine maybe I should push up and play it this way so if he cuts um, white maybe dies first one two three four five six to one two three four five six maybe white dies first so very risky this way but he did not cut he went for life and this way i have again options if i'll Honey, he will most probably cut, but then I have a slightly stronger group. If he defends and then cuts, then then still there is this move, and he does not even have an eye on the bottom. so that will be fine as well so this is actually the move I guess but I still did not know what happens after he cuts maybe he will run out surround my group and give up the three stones I did not want to read that all out I said I'll I wanted my center influence so I take my center influence and even if you are alive then I can invade and maybe there is still uh, some potential of uh, hurting his group which has only one arm 
but as I was reading, if he responds to that and responds to that, then he has only one eye and needs to find a second surrounded by those groups. And my g5 now really comes to shine. So I can play this way. He needs to connect now since we saw the snapback. And since he needs to connect, I have a strong shape here. I just can go for almost any kind of surround and I have a not cuttable uh, group towards the center and the light group on the corner so he will be dead and this is huge but oh uh, he oversaw the snapback and with the snapback he resigned um, since now I got all of this and center influence, so I can evade any time. Well, this was the game. I will go ahead and play a second one. So, see you in a few moments.